Welcome to uh, another DIY uh, video on how to build your own homemade uh, laser. Uh, in this video I'll be breaking down all of the essential hardware and components that you'll need to build your own uh, infrared laser. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's uh, begin. Now uh, before I get into the nitty gritty here of uh, this laser uh, device, I'd just like to make a disclaimer. Uh, building your own homemade infrared lasers can be extremely dangerous. I highly recommend that you buy yourself a pair of uh, lazy laser safety uh, glasses that are rated for at least OD6 or OD6 plus uh, in laser protection. Uh, not only will they block uh, the impact of the laser, but also the uh, radiation that's uh, emitted from such devices. So yeah, please don't try this at home, and uh, if you do, or if you're interested in the hobby of lasers, please buy yourself a pair of uh, laser safety glasses. So the construction of this uh, infrared laser is uh, really quite simple. I'm reusing a switching power supply, model DSP525AT. And uh, this power supply I scavenged from a uh, old broken uh, floppy disk computer. And uh, it wasn't in uh, working condition to begin with, so I had to uh, repair and replace a uh, electrolytic capacitor. And I also had to uh, dust out the insides because it was quite dirty. And I also had to uh, adjust the fan motor since it was uh, quite unstable. So this power supply has been modified and rewired to uh, output a potential of 7 volts uh, directly to the driver here with the positive in and the uh, positive out to the laser diode in this enclosure. But as for the driver, I'm reusing a Kia 7805A semiconductor. Uh, this regulator is entirely fixed and the input is also uh, short-circuited to the uh, heatsink using that orange wire there. And I have a uh, load rated for uh, 3 ohms of uh, resistance using a carbon resistor connected to the input to the output. And I have the uh, common pin directly connected uh, to the heatsink and the output is uh, connected directly to the uh, laser diode in this enclosure here. Now for the uh, laser module here, I have the uh, laser diode uh, situated inside of this uh, plastic enclosure here. The uh, laser uh, diode that I'm using is uh, in the infrared and it's actually a DVD writer, uh, model TSH653. And I extracted this uh, laser diode. And if you look closely, you can actually see the optic that's uh, reflecting there against the flash of my phone. So yeah, it's actually a very simple uh, method of uh, producing the emission that's required uh, for this type of laser. Okay, so uh, now let's talk about costs involved for uh, building your own homemade infrared laser because it most certainly is not um, free in the sense that you'll have to be pay for your own uh, protective uh, safety wear which is the most expensive um, product out of this whole setup here. Uh, these infrared uh, safety glasses uh, were sold to me offhandedly by a laser technician who was uh, done using them and only had like two or three years in the field with them. So I got them for like half the price they were online at about $130 or so. So that's how much those were. Uh, in terms of the power supply, I got this uh, for free. Uh, as for the driver, the semiconductor came also for free. Uh, the resistor, I uh, paid like maybe a um, dollar for or two dollars for off of uh, eBay. It came in a big pack of 100 PC uh, 3 ohm resistors, so that's uh, very cheap. And the uh, laser diode was uh, free because I got that out of an old broken uh, DVD player. It has a uh, output power of um, anywhere between 200 to 250 milliwatts of uh, laser light. So. This is an extremely dangerous uh, infrared laser. In fact, it's a uh, near-infrared uh, laser, also uh, classified as IRA, or uh, NIR, which is, uh, stands for uh, near-infrared. So operating this laser without any uh, certified uh, laser eye protection uh, is a terrible idea. Uh, it could be the last thing uh, you ever look at. So on the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, this laser uh, fits between 780 nanometers. So to arm this uh, laser device, I just have to plug in this AC to DC uh, power adapter here. Now that I've uh, armed the uh, laser here, I'm going to equip my uh, infrared uh, laser safety glasses. And this will filter out all of the infrared light once I uh, fire up the uh, laser here. Okay, so now I'm about to uh, fire up the uh, laser device here using the switch. 
and I've done my safety check and as a target I'm using this block of wood so here we go so there's the infrared laser mission there there's a bit of ripple but that's okay As you can see, it's um, it looks bright, but uh, to the human eye, to the human naked eye, this is actually completely, um, well, nearly invisible. It just appears a small red uh, dot, uh, barely visible. Now that I have the laser fired up, let's see what we can do to certain materials. Here's a piece of uh, thick electrical tape that's double-sided. I'm going to stick it into the focal point of the beam here. Oh yeah, it's trying to punch straight through it. You can see wisps of smoke coming off of there. Now what's interesting is that um, infrared gets absorbed into uh, black materials quite well. To the point where it starts um, breaking down the material and oxidizing uh, very, very rapidly. But watch as I uh, take this out and uh, stick my finger in there. Hmm. Nothing happens. I don't feel a damn thing. Why is that? Well, it turns out that infrared light poorly absorbs into skin. Let's try that again with uh, some electrical tape. Okay, let's see if uh, the beam can slice through uh, the electrical tape. Oh, pretty much with ease, look at that. Can the infrared laser ignite a match? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> this laser can also engrave wood. infrared laser interference laser scattering effects <laughs> 